everyone, it's Daz here. Welcome back to the next part in the Route to Chartership series. In this video, I'll be covering the professional review initial application process and also the professional review report, which you will need to submit after your initial application. The first thing you want to do is to make sure you find out key dates for submission deadlines. I put the link to the IC website with the key dates in the description below. For the application form, you will need Proof of IPD completion. This should be an email letter of sorts signed by your SCE and the ICE officer. Proof of payment. Three sponsors. One lead sponsor, which would make sense to be your SCE and two other sponsors. The two other sponsors must be chartered or higher, but does not have to be with the ICE. They could be, for example, be chartered with the iStructi. As long as they are chartered or above, that is fine. You will finally need a one-page summary of your report. Choosing the right report will be key to the success of your professional review. If you're going to take anything from this video, please take this next bit of advice on choosing the right project. You'll need to have a fairly good idea on what your report is going to be about before you send off your application. You should choose either one or two projects that you have been heavily involved with, ideally a project that you've led from a very early stage. The project doesn't have to be some big mega project. In fact, I'd advise against big major projects if you can. A project that is fairly simple but ticks all the IC attributes is a winner in my opinion. I failed my first time round and it had a lot to do with the projects I chose. The project I chose was immensely technical. Even though I was really involved, I wasn't involved until the later stages, so sort of detailed design and onwards. So I missed out on the early stage of design where a lot of the engineering decisions were actually done. That is where I fell apart in the interview. They were asking me about design decisions, which I should have known, but I didn't because I wasn't a part of it at the early stage of the design. I chose two projects. One was to cover a lot of the engineering and technical attributes and the other project, which I led from the start, which covered a lot of the commercial and management attributes. When I retook the exam, I dropped one project and chose another. The project I ended up choosing was a project I had been working on non-stop for the year, so I knew everything about it and I had so much to write and talk about. You will be asked questions on design choices or decisions, so the best way to cover your base is to have led the project from conceptual design stage all the way to construction. Don't give the interviewers the opportunity to pick on really hard technical concepts. There are nine attributes for a reason, so you need to make sure the project or projects you choose can cover all of them. You need to know everything about the project or projects you choose, contracts, procurement, design, etc. Literally anything to do with the project. This will help you out at the presentation and interview stage. Choose a project where you don't have to go out your way to learn, you just know it because you lived and breathed the project. There will be more to talk about and you will have a full understanding of all the decisions because you probably made them. In the interview stage, they will ask you questions about why decisions were made and why others were ignored. By having been through all the decision making, you will easily be able to answer all these questions. Remember to get your one page summary report signed off by your lead sponsor. Now that you've submitted your application and selected the project or projects you'll be writing about, it is now time to actually write the damn thing. I'm here to offer some tips about what to put in your report. Firstly, you should know that your report, presentation and interview questions are all going to be heavily linked together. Your presentation will need to talk about an aspect of the project you chose but didn't mention within your report. The interviewers are going to ask questions about your report and presentation. Start off by writing down all the attributes and then start assigning experiences and evidence to them. Evidence could be the following, sketches, details, drawings, calculations, any form of correspondence, designers risk assessments, reports, finances, any site photos. These are all really useful pieces of, in, of evidence which can be used within the body of the report or within the appendices. You don't have to use it all but by putting it in a dedicated folder where you can see it all can make picking and choosing what bits of the project you want to write about. This gives you a good basis on what to write and ensures you cover all the attributes. Mentioning things that happened on site is also a great way to talk about a lot of attributes within the report. Make sure you do not exceed the 5000 word limit. Your CV, CP and DAP does not count towards the word limit. Your CPD records must be up to date and linked to your DAP. For the chartership, you need to have completed at least 180 hours of CPD and a minimum 30 hours a year. You need to have completed some form of health and safety training every year as well. Make sure you use high quality images, PDFs or sketches. Grainy photos are not going to look good and will give a bad impression. If you've been watching my channel and have got into digital sketching, this is the place to showcase it. There's no harm in redoing a sketch if you think a sketch is an important detail, but it's a bit messy 
messy, just redraw it, no one's gonna know. You're allowed to have an appendix, but you are not allowed to have more than three A3 drawings, 12 pages of other evidence. These could be calculations, sketches, or email correspondence. Basically, any evidence you think will be worth showing off. Make use of the appendix and make sure you reference appendices within the body of the report. You must submit your report at least 15 working days before your review date. Do not miss this deadline. Make sure you save some content for your presentation. Don't write about everything in your report. Especially don't write about anything you don't want to be questioned on in, in your interview. Avoid ambiguous topics if possible. If you do feel you need to add a bit of ambiguous evidence or content, make sure you are prepared to answer some tough questions. Get a colleague to think of some questions that they could ask you and prepare answers for them. Get your report reviewed and checked. Get it checked by engineers as well as non-engineering persons. It can be great to get the view of someone who is not of an engineering background to check that it makes sense. An engineer will have an easier time interpreting something that doesn't quite make sense, so getting a completely fresh pair of eyes on it can be really useful. So this covers the professional review application and the report. I hope you found this video um, interesting and useful. The next video will be covering the presentation and I'll be talking about how you should prepare for it. Please remember to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next part. Cheers.